Hello! In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to texture stuff. Specifically, how to arrange the maps so they give the effect that you are looking for. Uh, in this case we will be using this model I already made of a stylus pen. Um, it is basically just uh, a pen for a graphics tablet I modeled after uh, a reference, so basically after what I have myself. So yeah. If we go into the shading tab, so this here, we can see that the material is just a principled BSDF. There is not much to it. It has uniform roughness all over. Um, it has one base color. Um, that is because the pen I use really just has that one color and um, there is not much variation to it but uh, for instance in wood you would see a difference wood wood yes um, so for instance if you look at uh, planks you would see some planks are lighter some are darker there is variation uh, like for instance the grain um, like here, you have lighter parts, darker parts that make up the wood. Um, you have bumps and everything. Um, and we are going to look at how we are going to do that. You have two methods of achieving what you want. One is procedural, which basically means uh, you're not using images, but rather uh, complex math, which you... Don't, don't be scared. You don't actually have to know math to do that. The computer will do everything for you if you know what you're doing, uh, but the thing is we, uh, it's way easier and uh, less computational heavy to do things with textures, with images. So let me just go ahead and set the clipping to a minimum so I can really zoom into that stylus. Um, basically I'm going to uh, take these rough parts of the stylus and um, texture them. So I'm going to give this a basic unwrap smart UV project um, just so we can put a texture on it. It's not going to be great because I've done an automatic uh, unwrap. If you want to know how to UV unwrap uh, certain things then make sure to watch my tutorials on it because uh, it is very important. You basically can't do anything without unwrapping. This is just just a quick, uh, quick and dirty method, just that you a smart UV project. Uh, it's not going to give good results, but um, they'll be all right for most of the things. So uh, I'm just going to go to this rough plastic. It's in German because I made it for myself. But uh, this is rough plastic. So um, yeah, when you download the texture from Polygon uh, Textures that come. Uh, texture haven. I will put some of the websites I uh, frequently use in my description so you can take a look at that. So I will only put uh, sites in there that have some or only um, free textures so yeah. If you download them you will have them in the folder. It looks like this. Now what you can do is uh, you can already tell that uh, those are maps for different things. For instance, uh, this one says col, or C-O-L, stands for color. You also have that same map, uh, but it's called diffuse or albedo. Um, it's basically all the same. Color, albedo, and diffuse is always the same. And it always goes into the, into the base color. So you just drag it in. You just uh, hover over it in your folder, you just drag it into Blender, and place it here, connect the color socket with the base color, and voila, you have um, wood. But it's not quite that easy, because now it's just really not physic uh, physically accurate. If I go into rendered mode, you will see, basically it is completely flush. There is no such things as indents or or bumps or anything. It's all plain, uniform, all the way around, as if you sanded it down with the really fine sandpaper um, to make it look like this. So there is absolutely no way this would ever look like this. It would have some bumps, some indents, oops, that was not planned. Um, so yeah, how can we achieve that? Let me 
we go into texture mode. Um, how can we achieve that? For the bumps, we have two kinds of maps. One is the bump map, and one is the displacement map. If you have just one of them, so all, uh, only bump or only displacement, it is basically or usually always uh, one map for both. So you can use displacement and bump for one. Where is the difference in between displacement and bump? One physically deforms your mesh, so displacement physically deforms it, while bump only gives it uh, the illusion of bumps and indents. Uh, so what you basically want to use for physically accurate is the displacement uh, and the bump only for small details. Uh, so this is for rather big details, but we can use it as a bump also because uh, we don't have a bump and they are usually pretty similar. So we drag in a bump and uh, where we would we connect them? We have base color, subsurface and all of these different parameters, but there is no uh, input for bump. That is because it goes into the normal, because you're actually displacing normals, uh, so to speak. It is not doing quite that, but uh, just imagine it does that. So what are normals? Normals are lines that are facing out of your mesh. So if I go in here and enable normals, you will see, just let me make that way smaller, even smaller. So you see, normals are these lines that coming out that are coming out at right at the right angle of your faces or your vertices. Basically, they come out at a right angle, and you're basically pushing these outwards, inwards, uh, and that is the whole magic of a bump map. It makes uh, reflections and uh, such things. So it would only be logical to put this into the normal map. But we are feeding a yellow socket into a purple socket and that is never good. You can see this is already becoming darker and it has like this shiny effect and we can't really see anything. So what we need to do is change this to none color. And at first glance it doesn't change anything. And I will tell you why. Because in order to use the bump map you need something else. You need a shift A to enable this panel, then search for bump, a bump node. Now if you feed that into the normal, it's basically the same. So you need to feed that into the height. Now you can see something happened, but it's really ugly. So you have these two parameters, and they are both only for the height socket. The distance is, well you can see it as Blender trying to figure out how deep you want the details to come out. So it digs into your texture, so that is the distance, uh, that it calculates uh, your, uh, your details from. I usually set this to point 0.1 as it gives the best results, and so you can see a little improvement, um, but you have these lines still. And in order to fix that, we can just adjust the strength and you can see these lines go away and come back. I will put this to 0.5. So, there is a, a quite a significant amount of bump, but not as much as before. And now if we go ahead and render this, you can clearly see that you have light, uh, cat, uh, that you have surfaces catch light where there are no modeled surfaces. Before it was, it was all plain, now you can see here you have a shadow because there is light coming from here so it can't illuminate that part but then again the light uh, again comes from here and you have that little light coming off that edge here uh, so it really brings out the edges but the, all, but the limitation of a bump map is basically its, uh, its inability to displace in 3D space but only in 2D space. So what I mean with that is it's only pushing stuff outwards and inwards. So it's basically displacing along a plane. Uh, it can only go out and in. And uh, what that makes it do is um, it can't really give you uh, high quality details. And 
then we have something else. So here we have the color, here we have the displacement of the bump. Um, we will come to this later. And then we have the normal map. You can see we have two normal maps. Uh, basically you have a 16-bit variation and you have uh, a normal variation. Um, so this one is JPEG. It is most likely 8-bit, if not even 6-bit, uh, but most likely 8-bit and basically this is for when you are rather far away from your model, so not for us. Um, if you are close to your model, you would always use the 16-bit bit as it stores uh, more information about, uh, about everything, so you can have nicer quality details at closer ranges. Uh, now, you can see it's almost all blue. It has that uh, purplish blue tint and uh, it's not really exaggerated. Sometimes you even see green and uh, a lighter blue and the red uh, tint to it. So that is basically the, cor uh, the coordinates. Uh, if you look at this, this is blue, green and red. Uh, and it's basically showing X, Y and Z coordinates. And that is what normal maps do. Well, this pushes out and pulls inward the geometry, um, or at least fakes it. The normal map, if we put that in, it has the information of left, right, up and down. So we can actually displace things, or at least act like we're displacing things, in a 3D space. So if we put the normal into the normal, we can see it looks horrible. It got really dark, it's uh, it's really shiny as it was before and you can see these strips and it looks all ugly. Now why is that? First of all, everything that doesn't go into the base color should be set to non-color data. So we go here into the color space, set it to non-color and we see a big improvement, but still not good enough. Now what we need to do is press shift A, search for a normal map. Now we put it in between, and you can see it's all fine and dandy. Now you have again a strength slider, and you can see what it does. It really does give you these slight indents right here. It's usually used for small scale details. I will put this at 0.7 or even 0.8. Now let's go nuts and set it to 2 or 3 maybe too much, let's set it to 2. So, now I'm going exaggerated, so I can later show you what it looks like when you only have the base color, and where's the difference when you have these two and a gloss map. Now, with a gloss map you have an issue in Blender, at least. So, you can see this is a gloss map, but if you look at Blender and the principal shader, we do not see any glossiness. We only have this roughness slider and the roughness is basically the inverted thing of gloss. Now you have textures online that are roughness textures and you would just import them like this and plug them in like this and you would be good to go if they say they are roughness textures. But this one says it's a gloss texture and we have an issue with that. Since with Blender, a value of 1, so a completely white pixel in this image, means that is that it is completely rough. And the black pixel uh, means that it is completely glossy, so there is no roughness. With glossy textures, it looks a little bit different. With gloss textures, where it is white, it is completely glossy, so no roughness. And where it is completely black, there is... Uh, a lot of roughness or no glossiness. So it's basically an inverted uh, version of one another and some 3D textures use roughness, some 3D textures use gloss, but they can be used or one and the same textures can be used in both engines. And how can we do that? Since this is just an inverted version of this, we can hit Shift A, search for invert. And when we have that invert node here, we place it in between and now we have fixed the issue. I can show you if I hit uh, edit, preferences, a window pops up like this. I type in node wrangler and check the box. 
Now I can shift and control click on this map and I can see this is very bright, very light. So yeah, if I go to this invert node and do the same, we can see it's quite a bit darker. Where it is, where it is uh, dark, it becomes light. Where it is light, it becomes dark. And that is basically uh, what we want. We want this inverted version of the gloss map, or just a roughness map. And basically, that is the whole texture setup done. Um, now, this is what you would do for things uh, that are physically correct. If you need uh, a roughness map, you can put it in here. So if th some things in your uh, mesh are metallic and some things in your mesh are plastic or dielectric, as we call it, uh, you would need a map for that and you would put it into this metallic import. If I put that to one, you can see it becomes a little bit metallic. But we will put this to zero because we have no metallic surfaces whatsoever. And um, yeah. There is one final thing, you could always uh, go ahead and with the node wrangler add-on selected, press shift and control and T on your principled map shader and then you could go here, select everything and principled texture setup. Now why didn't I show you that at the beginning? Because Sometimes it happens that you can't do that uh, because the textures are simply not made for it. It already detects that this is a glossiness map and that it needs to be inverted. Um, so that is that. It also names this, uh, these things into displacement, normal, roughness and uh, base color. So it is easier for you. I will quickly undo that. and reconnect my things. Now on the screen you will see uh, what it looks like when there is only color information and what, it w and what it looks like if there is normal roughness and bump information in the model. I hope this was useful to you and uh, we can see each other in the next episode when I do something else. This was a complete beginner's tutorial. Uh, I guess you will need a tutorial on uh, UV unwrapping. You have two of these on my channel. Uh, so you can start modeling and texturing your models today very easily. I also have this model for free download on my website. And if you need help, you can surely check out my Discord server where I will try to answer all your questions. Or you can simply write a comment down below. So. I can help you. Oh, we will see each other in the next episode. Bye.